been in here for quite a while, so thank you. Um, we've got a lot to show you, so we're going to get started right away. So without further ado, let's meet our scientists. She works right down the hallway, loves bird watching in her spare time, and can never turn down a mean game of solitaire. Please give it up for Sparrow Picklefeather. He's a talented underwater basket weaver, whatever that is, self-proclaimed super magician, and collects rocks on his weekends off. Please give it up for Chester Beetlebach. Hailing all the way from across the street. This guy spends a lot of time teaching science. Here he is, Mr. Jason Norty. Hello, everyone. Hopefully, you found room for our last science show of the night. We're here to do some science, in particular physics. My personal favorite type of science. Does everybody know what physics is? It's like science, and science is like magic. Um, I got the magic for you right here. Look at this circle, see that my stop, arm. Stop, stop. Uh, science is not magic. Magic is actually science. But do you know what physics is? Fish. Fish. No, that's like, like plants, animals, that's biology you might be thinking of. Physical. Yeah, let's get physical. No, 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 no. Rocks. Rock. You know, that's like geology, earth science. Um, a lot of people don't know what physics is, but it's actually just the study of everything. Um, we learn about motion, light, electricity, sound, waves, stuff like that. That's, um, like I said. Mm -hmm. I sure. Uh, we're going to start tonight with a little demonstration involving fluids, and hopefully everyone can see it those in the back. I got a two liter bottle full of water here, and there's this little pink thing on the top. And if I take this chunk of metal here and I hold it next to the pink thing, you can see the pink thing kind of chases it down. No. Well, that's not very tricky, but so you got a magnet. Well, yeah, I do have a magnet. Yeah, it's mag. It's so that's how it works, it's a magnet. Yeah. Good. How, how can we test that and be oh, sure? Scientific um, <laughs> Use something else that's metal. Um, metal, but not a magnet. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, so, so we'll try this chunk of metal, and that, that works too. Ah! Uh, you are not tricky, Mr. Gordon, <clears throat> because I know that inside this pink thing, there's a magnet. Yeah, that's what it is. So, he the magnet that. and the metal are attracted, and that's what it's coming. Yep. How can we test that theory? Plastic. Plastic? Good idea. Wood? wood. Anything that's wood. not metal or magnetic, right? So, if I try the wood... Oh, yeah. Gotta be magnetic. Gotta be magnetic. What else can we try? Cell phone? Perfect. Oh, like yeah. magnetic cell phone. Or something? Um, we try a cell phone and that. <laughs> Nothing. It's off? It is off. Turn it on. It's not going to work if it's not <laughs> on. <laughs> yes. Oh no, let's try that again. Uh, what I tell you. It does work so, Some type of electromagnetic wave or something. Like a wave like this? <laughs> what else could we try? What else could make this work? Uh, brain waves. Yes. We're scientists and we have some yes. good brain stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Brain waves. Brain waves. Well, knowledge. Just let us, just let <laughs> us try. We know everything. <clears throat> Brainwaves obviously don't work. Oh, wait, wait. It was just 
Uh, maybe we just need a few more brain waves. Could you yeah. all help us? Yeah. yeah. If you stare really, really hard and think, go down, go down, it will. Go I know on. it. Go well, yeah, all of you all together are smarter than you just do. Run? Run. Are you ready? Run. One, two, right there, three, right there. go. I just get done saying about science and magic. <coughs> oh man, magic, magic, science. magic is really just science. So there's nothing magic about that. It's not brain waves. I can make it go down whenever I want. Oh. Any ideas how I'm making it go down? You've been here already. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Anybody else? Oh. How am I doing it? Not plastic. You know? Not remote control. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a very good idea. Not my ring. Oh, that's a good one. Oh. Electricity? No. Oh. What do you think? Give the bottle a little squeeze. Ah. Do it. Wow! So, you just use your The magnet the phone, I dumped them through it. All I do is give it a little squeeze, and it goes down. Uh, if the... What, what's happening here is a trick with density. What happens is we force water by squeezing it, we force water into the little tube, thus making it more massive with the same amount of volume, which increases the density higher than the density of water, which makes it sink. Does that make sense? So the more water that goes up in it, makes it heavier, like an anchor, and it falls down. Something like that. Yeah, good. Well, that's one fluid demonstration. There's other fluid demonstrations. Um, when most people hear the term fluid, they think liquids, right? Um, not only are liquids fluids, but there's another type of fluid. I think you two are familiar. No, no, no. Um, you guys can help me with the gas demonstration. Um, gas also happens to be a fluid that you two know about. Uh, and we can do a little trick called, this is Bernoulli's principle, which says in a fast moving fluid, the pressure is decreased. So if we move fluid through the straw fast, the pressure right above the ping pong ball will be decreased. So you should be able to get the ping pong ball to hover. Um, and how that works is when the ping pong ball tries to start falling, it's in low pressure when it falls into the high pressure, the high pressure pushes it back into the low pressure. So um, if you're really good, you can actually kind of tilt it sideways a little. All right. You can try this at home with a straw like that, or this blow dryer works okay. A better one, but the tall, skinny ones work a little better. Uh, should be able to do So that's fluid. Another, another fun topic in physics is motion. We spend a lot of time in motion. We do the entire first semester at the high school doing motion in physics. My favorite type of motion is circular motion. Um, how many of you have ever ridden a bike? Okay, now how many of you can ride with no hands? Okay, is it easier to ride with no hands if you're moving fast or if you're sitting still? Moving fast. Moving fast, right? It's much easier. So, um, what I have here is a bike tire. If I let go with this hand, what's going to happen? It's going to fall. It's going to fall. Right? Well, it just yeah. falls down, obviously, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So now, if I get it spinning, is that going to make any difference? What's going to happen if I let go again? And nobody's riding it, yeah. so it's going to fall. Whoa. What? <laughs> oh, it's not falling over. Nobody's riding on it. Um, and notice it was spinning that way, right? Well, you probably just blew on it or something. Can yeah. we get it to spin the other way? I, 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 I went this way. Right, let's try the other way. If we go this way, it spins the other way. Okay? And using the laws of physics, it's very easy to predict which way it's going to spin. It's all about conservation of angular momentum, it's called. The earth exerts a torque 
on this, which changes the angular momentum in order to conserve the angular momentum, the wheel precesses either clockwise or counterclockwise. You guys taking notes? So we test after this. So why do you keep moving to a follower? Yeah. Yep. You could have said that too. You got it. Um, another fun little demonstration, I might need you to back up just a little bit here. Um, how many of you have been skating before? Ice skating, rollerblading, even dancing? You like to do little twirls, right? Like that. You notice ballerinas, figure skaters, when they do their twirls, they're always doing stuff with their arms. Is that just, just for show, for style points? Yeah, so you look like a dancer. Um, actually, there's a lot of physics behind that. And I'll show you here. I'll start with my arms spread out. If I can get Chester to give me a little spin here, I'll try to stay. Be careful of the kids, Chester. Okay, I'll try to not fall off. Give me a little spin. I can pull my arms in and speed up and put them out and slow down and speed up and slow down and speed up and stop. Maybe. Uh, and that's all about just changing your mass. What I'm doing is changing my rotational inertia. Okay. Angular momentum needs to be conserved. So when I increase my rotational inertia, my rotational velocity decreases. If I decrease my rotational inertia, my rotational velocity increases. So, Got it all figured out? So what you mean is, when my arms are out, I go slow, and when I bring them in, I go fast! Exactly. Kind of. Wait, um, wait, wait, I got an idea. What happens if you stand on this spinny thing and you use the wheel? <gasps> Good. Let try it. Uh, yeah. So, I'm going to stand on this and get this spinning. Nothing happens. Uh, if we get a spinning and I change my angular momentum, I spin cool. in opposite directions. That is super sonic science. We need to get our cars running like that. We wouldn't need gas anymore. Uh, <laughs> 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 Except we have wheels in there, you know. Like that. That'd be great. So that's a couple motion demonstrations. Um, in physics, we also do a lot with sound and light. Uh, that's actually what my students are studying right now, is sound and light. Uh, an easy little demonstration you can try at home. I love this one, Mr. Doherty. I love this one. It's my favorite. I know what we're already going to do. I already know what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> if you say super duper loud, you can break these babies. Come, Pooja. Yeah, you get me? Please, please. It's awesome. First of all, you're way off pitch. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to break this, you have to hit the right frequency, and the frequency you want is that. So you have to sing at that frequency and then really loud to get the break. But we're not, we're not going to do that in here. That can actually be done. Um, many people have broken a glass by singing. Uh, an easier thing you can do with glasses, if you get, if you get your finger a little bit wet, um, and get the right amount of friction, you can get the glass to vibrate at one of its fundamental frequencies. Let me try one of the other ones here. Uh, and notice, Each glass has a slightly different pitch due to the shape and the size of the glass. Just like instruments have different pitches. That is so pitches. beautiful. Could you come and play at my next Christmas party? If, if you might be sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, oh, so that's, sound, that's a sound demonstration. Now, some of you might know that sound actually travels in waves. Okay? Um, do you know anything else that travels in waves? The ocean. Yes, the ocean. You got one? Sound. Yep, yeah, sound. We're looking for a surfer. Sure. A lot of you might not know, but light travels in waves also. Um, in physics, we learn about things like um, why the sun sets red, how is a rainbow made, why is the, why is the sky blue. Um, do either of you know why the sky is blue? Well, the earth is mostly covered with water, and so the blue in the water reflects up and makes the sky blue. 
The blue water reflects and makes the sky. No, the sky and, yeah. makes the water blue. So you, you're saying the sky is blue, and that reflects up the water and makes the water blue. You're saying the water is blue, reflects and makes the sky blue. So you agree? Yep. Which one was blue first? No. The chicken. So, um, both of you are sort of right. The water often appears blue because it's reflecting from the sky, but the sky was blue first. Okay, and the reason the sky is blue is because the blue light reflects out of the white light. It disperses out of the white light. Um, white light is made up of all the colors in the rainbow. That's how rainbows are made. The white light from the sun gets spread out. It diffracts and refracts, it's called, as it bends out of the raindrop and forms a rainbow. Um, what I have here is, are some lasers where the light's already been separated. So I have, if you want to hit the lights, I have, um, I have a red laser. I have a blue laser and I have a green laser. If I shine them all at the same time, um, you'll notice. Buttons here. Um, out of all of them, the blue one kind of looks the widest, right? The red one's the skinniest, then the green one, and the blue one's the widest. So the blue one spreads out the most, and that's why our sky is blue, is because the blue light reflects off easiest and spreads out. And that's why when the sun sets, the light from the sun has to go through a lot of atmosphere and a lot of dust and stuff in the air, and then it reflects the longer wavelengths like red. So um, with the red, that's the longest wavelength but the weakest energy. So um, blue is the exact opposite. It has the shortest wavelength but the most energy. Um, we can demonstrate this by shining at something that's low in the dark. If I shine red light, not much happens. If I shine green, which is medium intensity, we might get a little glow. But if I shine blue, which is the most energetic light, visible light, wow. that's so cool. glow. That's awesome. and, and I'll work with any glow in the dark stuff. We're going our frog. You should always be really careful with lasers, never shine them in anyone's eyes because they can really damage your eyes. Okay? So you have like a shield over your face or something. I got a shield over my face. Alright, here we go. Uh, Alright, one more quick light demonstration. Now, uh, lasers always go in a straight line, right? But scientists figure out a way to bend lasers and send it through something called fiber optics. Okay, it's like a light tube that the light can travel down. Have you ever heard of fiber optics? Yeah. Yeah, there's a few Christmas decorations and toys that have a little, it looks like fishing line with the fiber optics, but there's a better use and that's communication. When they shine lights down um, a tube, you can see it bend around the tube and come out this end. And if you look carefully, you can actually see the laser beam bending inside, inside the tube. Uh, it's reflecting inside the tube. It's called total internal refraction. Um, so that's it for lights. That's one of my favorite uses of my <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, can you bend this laser to the side of the tube? Uh, that's not good. <laughs> yes, it is. No. Uh, no, my favorite units in physics is electricity. Okay? Um, here I have what's called a Van de Graaff generator. I'll turn the lights on in a minute so you can see what it looks like, but right now I'll just turn it on so you can see some sparks here. What happens is this silver ball fills up with electrons, and those electrons want to get down to the ground, and they think I'm the ground, so if I go near it, right now you can hear the electrons filling up. If I go near it, let me let it charge for a minute. I'm not getting very good sparks here. Oh, there's one. Uh, <laughs> let me try. Hang on. Uh, sometimes since we're up off the ground, the ground gets insulated as well. Let me try uh, putting it on the ground and see if we can get some other sparks. Oh, 
All right, you flip the lights on quick. Um, so now this thing, all the electrons, all the electrons go up here. They want to get to the ground. And now that I turn it off, there's still electrons on there that are trying to escape. So it's still, if I go and touch it, still be a little shocked. But now that I've totally discharged it, it's safe to touch. Now what do we use electricity for? Lights. Lights. So cameras. Let's hit the lights again. Yeah. Um, we'll try and make some light with this electricity. You can't. That's not gonna work. Hard. I have a light bulb in my hand, so let's touch it. It's your light, right? Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh. Whoa. Um, Whoa. Whoa. I can feel it going through me into the ground as I do this. Yeah. Uh, all right, you get the lights. Um, so. The electrons, as they flow through the bulb, they charge it just like any other lights of electricity. Point. Um, now this may look dangerous and scary, and it is, and you should never play with electricity. I know what I'm doing here. He's a uh, professional. This is thousands of volts, which would usually be scary and dangerous, but I know it's very low current. And if something's low current, that's high current is what you have to be afraid of, not necessarily high voltage, but you should never play with electricity anyhow. No, not a good idea. Um, now, what do you guys know about like charges, like charges, opposite charges? My charge card. No, not your charge card. Well, Paul uh, Duel says opposites attract. Yes. <laughs> opposites do attract and like charges. Oh, they're like oh, They repel. Right? Yeah. So, um, to demonstrate that, I'm going to put this back up here. Um, I have some pythons here. Wow. If we set that on there and put this on. Um, our pythons float away. Now, why would those pythons repel each other? Yeah. Because the charges are Yep, they have light charges that are making them repel each other. Um, there's all kinds of cool demonstrations you can do with this. We're running a little out of time, so what? You guys have any ideas of what else we could do, maybe? Uh, I have some bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, any wonderful ideas? Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. You guys brought cereal and bubbles. All right, well, which one do you guys want to see first? Bubbles or cereal? Bubbles. Bubbles wins every time. Bubbles seems to win every time. Um, We'll do bubbles first, so if I turn this on, watch the bubbles. Sometimes Chester's nose hair pops the bubbles before they take off. Yeah, I don't have a big nose. Now you can see some of the bubbles get sucked into it, some get sucked in and then repel, and that's all about the charges getting polarized by the by the electricity. Um, we do have time. We'll do the cereal quick. Uh, let's pour some fresh cereal in here. I think it might work. I just did. Oh, you did. Um, if we put the cereal up on here, uh, and fire it up. Rice Krispies. Cereal. Ready? Crackle. Oh. Sometimes I'll even blow it your feet. Back up, but I want you to shock. And I might, even though I'm up here, sometimes I gather a shock in me. So if I touch over here, see that shock? Um, so I still have some charge on me here. Um, let's do the next one back here just to be safe because we've got a lot of people up front. Um, the, so those are some of the electricity demos we can do. What else? Any other oh, wait, 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 wait. Isn't this one of those things that if you touch it, your hair stands up? Oh, oh, it is. Oh, 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 can we do that one? Uh, all right, that's going to be your last one, though. Okay, okay. Uh, I can do it. I can do it. No, no, I can do it. Your hair is way too curly. Oh. Your hair is way too greasy. Uh, <laughs> we need someone with long, straight, dry hair. Do we have any idea? I already no, said you can't do it. No, perfect person. Oh, oh. Student teacher. Oh, student teacher. Oh, teacher. All right, Ms. Kayla, come on up. Um, you're going to have to stand kind of sideways here. 
Maybe stand over here, put you up on top. Um, all right, so stand up on the blue over there. I have to kind of turn sideways. You can touch it now. It should be safe to touch. Go ahead. Safe. I'm going to you. Okay. Um, now, when I first turn this on, she won't get a shock at all because she's part of this system. Okay. She, all those electrons will flow into this ball and then they'll also flow into her. You can guess what's going to happen. Okay, now come towards me. If you reach out and release some of your charge, you see the hair kind of fall? And now watch when she gets down, I'll try to fall more. Okay, see how it just flattens out? That's all the electrons leaving here going down into the air. So give her a hand. Okay, I think that wraps it up for the night. I hope you had fun at our science show and the arts and activities nights. That was truly a hair-raising experience.